So it's our job. <coughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah is the highest praise yes. that we can give our Lord and Savior. Yes. He is a good, good Father. Yes. He's worthy to be praised yes. from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. This morning we want to have the attitude of worship and thanksgiving. I want you to bring your minds and your thoughts to the throne room of grace. I want you to understand that God has given us grace and mercy. So this morning, what we want to do is this. I need you to see yourself at the throne room. You know, the access, the place that Jesus has given us. You don't need a pass because he has given us, you know, all access. Yes. He is a good, good shepherd. This morning on my way, I was praising and thanking him for who he is. And he came in my car with such a sweet, sweet presence. So I want that presence and I ask Holy Spirit that you will come into this place with your sweet, sweet presence. Yes. Letting us to remember that you are our Lord and King. You are our Savior. You are he who was, is, and is to come. When we begin to think about his goodness, his grace, and his mercy, yes. that should it alone make you begin to want to bow down. Yes. This morning we bow down to the one true and living God. Living God. The one who created the heavens, the yeah. earth, and all that is within it. Visible yeah. as well as invisible. Yeah. Father, we thank you because we know you sit high and you look low. The Bible says your eyes go to and fro. Lord God, we know that you have been good to us. Better, than us, better to us than we have been to ourselves. Yeah. It sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. And the Bible says the truth will set you free. We are free indeed. We are free in this place. We are free in our hearts in our minds, body, soul, and spirit to worship and follow after you. Jesus, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for loving us. No one can love us like you. No one takes care of us like you. No one gives us grace and mercy like you. No one. So this morning, as we are here gathered together on one accord, asking that the King of Glory to come in, I need you to be able to shift the atmosphere to make it conducive for him to come in. The Bible says that his train fills this temple. But I'm asking him this morning to fill the temples of our hearts, body, soul, and mind. Give us a fresh new mind, a fresh new zeal, and a fresh new anointing. We need the anointing because that it breaks the yokes. Yes. This world is in so much torment this morning. I, I, I had to go before God knowing that he's the only person we can go to. Amen. I don't know what you came in here with this morning, but whatever it is, once you pass that threshold, God is in this place. Yeah. He's in you or you wouldn't have shown up this morning. I know you don't think you just woke up by the alarm clock. He woke you up because he has something for you to do. You can't keep on saying, well, they need to do this and they need to do that. No, you need to do it. The time is now. The time is now. Sacrifices have been made for us to even be standing in this place. The word says there shall be persecution, but you know what? It doesn't matter because as long as we have King Jesus, we're going to be all right. Yes. But you have to believe that. Not doubt, not waver. Because the enemy has shown up to steal, kill, and destroy. Because that's his job. It is your job to bow down. 
to get the power that you need from Almighty God. The song is called, Behold, I Give You Power. He says, I have given you power to think right, to act right, to walk right, to talk right, to call on me in your day of adversity. I have given you power from on high to realize that I am who I say I am and that I will do exactly what I said I would do. That is why we worship you, God. Because you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You have said in your word that we're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. That is why we worship you. That is why we bow down today. Knowing that without you, we could do absolutely nothing. But with you, all things are possible. We thank you for the awesome possibilities. You said, speak a decree and declare a thing and have it established. That's what you told your son, Joe. But we are your sons and we are your daughters. And we're coming in boldly, but more humbly to say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Even the things that we think shouldn't be like they should, you're still working it out for our good. Even when we look back and say, God, where are you? We have to remember, He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, Father, this morning, as we lift up our hands, knowing, Lord God, when blessings go up, Praises. When praises go up, blessings come down. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you just like you told Abraham. I have blessed you to be a blessing. Oh God, this morning, your sweetness, ah, your presence, ah, you are our strong tower. Yes. You are the one who snatched us out of the mud, the muck, and the mire and set our feet on solid ground. On the rock. On the rock. So today, people are worried. People are not focused on what they should be focused on. And what we need to focus ourselves on is the glory of the Lord. Because when he shows up, things have to change. When he shows up, sicknesses are healed. Minds are regulated. Woo, the Bible says, he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He has provided everything that we need. So why is your faith so downcast? He already told us the things that were going to happen. He already has warned us that things are going to get worse. But those that keep our eyes on him will not be forsaken. That's the beauty of God. It's not based on your faithfulness. It is based on his faithfulness. Because he has always been faithful to us. And his word will never waver. Never ever waver. He has spoken good things about you. He knows your name. He has put those footsteps that you are to follow. Follow Christ. He's only hope and glory that we have. Don't depend on this world system. No other system. The only thing you have is to trust and believe that he is who he says he is. So this morning, Father, we know you as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We know you as Jehovah Nisi, the one who we wave the banner, and the banner reads victory every time. Amen. That's victory every time. Amen. Not once, not twice. Don't go back and say, okay, God, you, you helped me these other two times, and I don't want to disturb you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I will give you what is good. He's so good, he said, I will give my beloved rest. I don't know who you are, but you need rest today. Rest in your mind, body, soul, and spirit. He's here. He said, ask, ask, and it shall be given unto you. If you're mine and you trust and believe in me. Do you trust him this morning? Oh, I heard about two or three of y'all. I said, do you trust him this morning? Do you trust him this morning to know that he is the answer to all I need? Always. 
So this morning, Father, as we come together, as we gather together, as those who are in here normally say, as the group, Amen. the group, Amen. that we realize who you are. Amen. And that is why we thank you. So, Father, I ask right now for everyone that is under the sound of my voice, whether you're inside the building or on your way, Father, those that are listening by the airways, I say to you this morning, good morning. I say to you this morning, good morning. I say to you this morning, good morning, because heaven is kissing the earth this morning. Because you are here. Because you are obedient. Because you came seeking the face of God. Yeah. So this morning we thank you and we bless you. I ask right now for all those that are on their way that you will give them traveling grace and mercy yeah. to and from their destination. Yeah. I ask Lord God that those that are here today that you will give them a special blessing yeah. because of their obedience, because of their hungering and thirsting after you. I say thank you this morning because of who you are in our lives. You are our every Yes. That's why we love you because you loved us first. Yes. So in the name of Jesus and the power of divine blood, we seal these prayers yes. by the word, by the blood, and by the spirit of the living God in Yeshua, Jesus' mighty and powerful name. All those under the sound of my voice that agree, let me hear acknowledged by saying, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Why not give God a shout? Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give God a shout. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. I can hear your shout. Hallelujah. Let's keep saying worship you Jesus I want you to focus on God today I don't want you to bother about the instruments because in the presence of God there is fullness of joy and whatever we praise him we are going to praise him with all of our hearts our mind our soul our body and our spirit and God we attend to us in Jesus name Thank you, Father. We're going to do something different this morning. I want you to get a partner. Hold hands with somebody. Be somebody's helper this morning. Wherever you are. Just hold on to somebody. Hold on to somebody wherever you are. Get a partner. Be in agreement with somebody. Whether the person is your wife, is your, no matter. Just get somebody. Hold on to somebody. I'll be holding on to my partner here too. We're going to do something different this morning. And I have to believe that God is here with us. It doesn't matter how small we are. But one thing I want you to understand is, the very moment I came into this house, my life has changed for better. Amen. This place is a place of prayer. It doesn't matter how small we are, there is God in this building. Amen. And we're going to help ourselves this morning. We're going to stand in agreement with ourselves. Yes. That today, we call ourselves a group. Amen. And that is what we're going to have today. Amen. I want us to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Forget about the drum set. Forget about the keyboards. Let us hack in onto God's voice. Let us sing unto him. Let us call upon him in truth and in spirit. And I believe that he is here in our midst. He's here. He's here. He's here. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. 
Lord, we are here for you, Jesus. Yes. Bow down and worship me. Oh God, Jesus. Bow down and worship me. Oh, worship me. Oh, we want to worship. Oh, worship him. Oh, let us bow down and worship. Bow down and worship me. Oh, Lord, we bow down and worship at your throne. Bow down. Because he's here in our midst. Begin to open your mouth and say, Father, you are here, Lord Jesus. Attend to my cry. Man tariye, tariya gada da motion tariya gada da. Man meriye ke tariya bosun tariya katala baba baba. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Lord, you're welcome in our midst, oh God. Oh, be lifted. We worship you, Jesus. Above the Lord of God. Oh, we lay our crown. We lay our crown. And worship. And worship. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, be lifted. Oh, be lifted. Above the Lord of God. Your presence, oh God. 
Jesus. and worship you. If you can speak in that tongue, why not open your mouth and speak in the language that the devil does not understand? situation and that is why we stand in agreement with you that you will do what you alone can do Jesus oh, amazing grace how sweet the sound Ah! 
close to you. Ah, never let me go. Oh God, I laid my hand and my neck for you. Jesus, to see that all that have a friend. You were my everything. Bring me now to you. You are my wall. You are all I want. You are all I want, Jesus. You're all I ever needed. You're all I want. Worship you, Jesus. Lord, you are welcome in our midst, oh God. We can feel your presence, Jesus. Tell God you are welcome, Jesus. You are welcome, Jesus. Lord, you are welcome, Jesus. We pour our heart to you this morning. We stand as one family. We stand as a group. We stand as a group, Lord Jesus. Take all the glory, Father. Take all the honor, Jesus. Ah. Thank you, Father. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how far you have been. It doesn't matter how you have cried and shed tears to God. At the right time, at God's appointed time, it will meet you at the point of your needs. Just have that belief that you are in the right place. Oh God, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. There is somebody that I've been crying for so long. The Lord says, I can hear you, my daughter. Just hold on to me. I will be right there. Ah, Jesus. Jesus, ah, Jesus, you are able to do 
what you alone can do. Yes. Feast in this people. Let them know that you are my God. That change it now. Oh God. I want you to open your mind and just ask God for one thing because He is here in our midst. I can feel it. Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome. Oh, Fantania, Catania, Shantaya, Catania. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Change, hallelujah. Location start to shift, hallelujah. You know, am I talking to my boy? 
Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Who's my God? Hallelujah, saints. It's a good time to be in the house. It's a marvelous time to be in the house. You have breath right now. I say hallelujah on your behalf. Because I give all the thanks to our Father. The one and only true and living God. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. It's a powerful thing to be connected to the most high God in the universe. I say thank you, saints. Thank you, saints. Please take your seats for a moment. We got a special guest speaker today. Someone that I cherish as one of our friends, our family friends. He's coming today to talk to the youth once again. He's coming today to tell the youth how they can move forward. Not just spiritually, but in their life. Sometimes, saints, if you don't understand, if you're a parent, the children can't really think they can talk to you, but they'd rather talk to someone else. <laughs> but this is to someone else. It's a brother in Christ. He's also a, an ordained pastor, and this brother is doing things in the community. He's shifting the community, letting youth know that there's still love. Letting youth know that they still have a chance. Letting the youth know, look in the mirror, that's your future. See, it's one thing to, to think that somebody else is going to take care of it. But when you see that you're the one that needs to take care of it, it gives you some inspiration. You don't like what's going on today? Look in the mirror. You need to take care of it. You don't like what's going on in government? Look in the mirror. You're going to take care of it. It's the will of God. And my brother, Coach James Campbell, come on forward, my brother. This is a true brother of Christ, and I thank you for all that you're doing in this community. Welcome, my brother. Welcome. Man, <laughs> there's some fire up in here. You guys go ahead and give Jesus a hand clap. Well, I just want to say I'm truly honored to be back, and I want to give an honor to Dr. Jermaine and Miss Rita. Uh, if you guys could give it up for them. Uh, also, to praise and worship my sister. Every time we come in here, it just takes me back uh, to when I was younger. That's really, you don't need an instrument. Thank you. you know, your body, your mouth is the instrument. Yeah. You know, God just wants you to make a sound, and it doesn't matter uh, which sound that it is. Yeah. Um, I had a video for you guys, a short video, but. I'm bring your tool on after this. Okay, so. Oh, so, so, so we're not. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, then I'm going to save this for the youth because that's amen. that I prepared something special for them. Yeah, but I just want to say, God bless you guys. Mm -hmm. Listen, do not despise small things, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Because God can turn small things into big things yes. because we serve a mighty, 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 yes. mighty, yes. mighty, yes. mighty yes. father that controls everything. So parents, I just want to tell you guys to be encouraged, to be involved with your children, go to the school boards, go to their student parent meetings, right? Because there's things that's going on in the communities and in the schools, and they need to see our face. And just like Dr. Jermaine said, you know, the word is the reflection, right? If you, if you see something that you don't like, young people, Get involved. Amen. Listen to me. Do you, how many of you guys ever heard of Benjamin Crump? How many of you guys heard? Of, okay, one young lady. How many of you guys heard of George Floyd? Amar Berry. Okay. This Trayvon Martin. <coughs> Trayvon Martin. Okay, this, this is the attorney that actually said these words, right? And I want to leave them with you guys. He said a couple of things, but I'm gonna just tell you guys this. We often say, Dr. Jermaine, that the kids are the future, right. but you guys are not the future. You guys are the now. That's what he said, you guys are the now. So you guys can clap for that. I want you guys to get fired up. I want you to stay motivated. Stay motivated in Jesus. Know that Jesus is the answer to everything. And I look forward to meeting with you guys over there because I got something special for you guys. I'm just going to give you the title. It's called God Made Us in His Image. Amen. And you know, I struggle. Like, I'm a backwards writer. <laughs> I wrote books backwards. Normally people write books, but I went to the studio and I wrote my first book. 
right? Because that's my comfort zone. So listen to me. I want you guys to know that you created in this image. That means that you guys, everybody in this room, parents never forget. Listen, I don't care how old you guys are, how old we are, because I'm a parent too. We have five kids. My oldest son is 35. My youngest daughter is 20, going to be 21 in March. So listen to me. It don't matter how old or young, you guys are creators. And the best, the best of your life is yet to come out. And so all you got to do is hang on to that and believe it. Hang on to God's word. Keep God's word in everything that you guys do. And I look forward to just breaking bread and sharing this word with you guys and sharing the testimony because we got to get back to that, doctor. Let me tell you why. It's the blood of our testimonies. You guys want to see change in the youth and in the world? Then we got to keep it 100. We got to be a buck and we got to tell our stories. And when you tell about what God has done for you, and some of you guys know what I'm talking about. I know you guys are rolling now. You're doing real well. I see a lot of Teslas in the parking lot out there. I see Mercedes in the parking lot. But we didn't always start like that. It was God that brought us to where we are now because we have the faith. See, faith without works is dead. If you're not working, it's gonna be dead. You're not gonna see no fruit. So I'm gonna park it right there. I just wanna thank you guys, Dr. Jermaine, Madam uh, Rita. Thank you guys. My man right here, you know, Caesar, you know, for what we're doing and what you're doing for us. I, I just bless you guys and I say I am grateful to be here and thank you for trusting me to be able to speak to the youth. We have a big event coming up in March. I'm going to let you guys know about that, parents. The reason why I say it's going to be with the school districts. Me and my wife just met Friday with BBC. Uh, we got some events coming up with them, Victor Valley College. Um, you know, they literally was trying to hire us. But listen to me. They wasn't trying to hire us. They see the God in us. Yeah. See, because last year when I was planting the seed and they didn't really know who I was because I'm truly humble. And that's what you got to say. Even when you're great because you are, you got to remain humble. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And they was they was ignoring me. You know, they wasn't showing me no play, my brother. But let me tell you something. We wrote this proposal back in, in, in uh, July and boy. They, they said, well, you missed the deadline. And I said, well, I didn't want to train teachers anyway. I'm after the youth. You guys got me training all these people with master's degrees and bachelor's degrees. But see, young people, that's what God will do. It, it don't matter. He's no respecter of person. He don't care how fine you are, how good looking, how Denzel looking you are. You know what I'm saying? How Holly Berry, how much money you got, Bill Gates in your bank account. He don't care about that. God don't care about that. He'll take a special needs individual and use that kid. If you guys ain't read the story of J Jacob, you guys need, a, you, you, Joseph, you need to check out that because that's a powerful story. That's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. But I am blessed by that. And then finally, uh, we met with Mr. Williford, who's over student services from Victorville, and they want us to do 14 minis, which is throughout this year, starting with this year and all the next year with our mentorship Amen. programs. Amen. And we met with all the heads of these different schools. Me and my wife uh, want to say that was Friday, but they said they want to start with the parents first. They gave me a voice, but when I first went in there, guys, listen to me. They acted like they, they, like I was speaking another language. You know, they was not hearing me. And it was God. It was God that moved them, that opened up the door, that moved the mountain. So listen to me, you guys. Keep plowing. Stay faithful. Whatever it is that you want to do, if you can see it, you can be it. Parents, no matter where you are right now, listen to me. I've done a lot of things and it's been not a pretty journey and I have not yet stopped and given up. So I'm encouraging you guys. I'm encouraging. I'm taking the courage out of me and I'm giving it to you guys. And I'm saying, look, 
keep pressing forward. That's how we got through tough times. That is the resilience. Listen, that's how we made it through slavery. That's how we made it through. Listen to me. This is real stuff because they don't want us to talk about critical race theory. They don't want us to talk about the different things, systemic things that we have been through. But you guys are resilient, right? My dad is 88. He's seen it. He served in three branches, three branches. It was so bad. Listen to me, guys. My dad, the first branch he went to was the National Guards. The second branch was the Army. The third branch was the Marines. And all of his money he sent back to Louisiana for his brothers and sisters so that they could come here to, you know, Washington, Oakland, California, to the places that they landed all of his sisters. <laughs> and let me tell you something, guys. You can't forget about that. But listen, don't get stuck with that. You got to know your story and you got to know your history, but don't get stuck with it. What you do is you turn it around and you let God use you and motivate you to work with all people, right? And that's what we're doing now. And that is the power of God. And that's what God can do. He can take all genders. He can take all races. He can bring us all together because as long as you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, <laughs> we're brothers and sisters. I love all you guys, brothers and sisters. Dr. Jermaine, I hope that was good enough. But that's just a little bit. And thank you guys again. Thank you, brother. So we get all the youth to uh, go out and follow uh, Coach James to uh, 201 and get ready to be educated and transformed, amen? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good day. So all the youth are getting together, follow Coach James to 201. I always want to go. <laughs> hey, bro <laughs> bro Brother Caesar's the youth. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. God bless. God bless. It's going to be a powerful thing over there that's going on over there. Sometime they uh, they come back with more questions. So get ready, parents. <laughs> questions are good. Questions are good. Um, Auntie Esther, can you get the door for us, please? Close that up for us. Um, let's go ahead and stand to our feet. And let's have a prayer before we get into the word. Because the Holy Spirit is here. We just need to offer up our prayers. So like um, Pastor D said, praises go up. Blessings come down. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this day. This day that you already ordained, predestined before we were born. This day, the day to allow us to sit at your feet and learn of you. Father, today, allow your Holy Spirit to enter and teach us the ways of you. Reveal to us the dark and deep secrets of the kingdom. Yes. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in and usher knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of you. We thank you in advance, Father, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Let's go and take our seats. Hallelujah, saints. Dick and Dave, we can bring up Ephesians 1. So we, we, we looked at this, and um, today's... Uh, Message, let me get the message up here because I don't do it. All right, there you go. So today's message is spiritual blessing. You can't see it there, Miss Sydney. It's online. They can see it there. Sorry about that. We'll get there. We'll be advanced one day. <laughs> right? We'll be advanced. Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor Amos is going to make us advance, right? Sorry, you're going <laughs> to. Amen. Amen. So, so sp spiritual blessings is the title of the message, and we're going to come to each and every one today out of Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. We're going to try to make it through from 1 to 8. We'll see what the, how the Spirit guides us. We'll see what the Spirit has in store for us. And we'll see what the Spirit is going to teach us today. So spiritual blessings. You know, when Paul wrote this, uh, the, this epistle is different than other epistles. Why is that? Because <clears throat> this epistle, normally when Paul writes the epistle, he's, he's talking about issues in the church. He's talking about, hey, you know, make sure you be quiet. Make sure one, you know, if you speak tongues, one needs to translate. If, you, if, you, if you're out of order, get yourself in order. Paul's always teaching those methods uh, in the epistles. <clears throat> but in this particular epistle, Ephesians, it's encouragement. In this particular epistle, it's, it's encouragement. And sometimes, church, we need to have encouragement. 
So we know the scriptures, we've been through certain things, but we got to be minded. We need to be reminded of things in the kingdom to give us encouragement. Yes. <clears throat> through this encouragement, we should gain some strength as we get encouraged through the word of God. Yes. It's encouragement. And this epistle, when Paul writes, you'll see that the encouragement that he's talking about is from a spiritual realm. Yes. It's not here. On, you know, by tangible things, things that, you know, you probably put on today, the name brand designer stuff. It's not that type of encouragement. It's not the bank account where you go put your ATM and get money out. It's not that encouragement, but it's the ATM. It's the repository of wealth from God. It's the repository, a well of strength. See, when you take out of the well, did you? I, I, so... We have a well in my wife's property in Ghana. So people come every morning, they line up to get water out of the well. Every morning they come, right? And then they come in the afternoon to get more water out of the well. But I've noticed something. The well's never dry. There's more water coming out of the well. The more they take, it looks like the more they, more comes. So this is the spiritual blessing or encouragement that we got to take away from Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. We have it up there? Okay, so New King James. I mean, we're in the King James and I have the NIV next to it, so I'll probably go back and forth. Whatever version you have, it'll work because we'll all get there because it's a combination. It's a combination. So here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. We got to stop there. Paul always jumps out. He, he, he kicks people right, right, right there. He kicks you right out of the door. Boom, here you go. Paul, <clears throat> an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's a messenger of Jesus Christ. By the what? The will of God. Now, I don't know how many of us can, can, can identify to what Paul's saying. <clears throat> it's the will of God that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. The will of God. Now, this will is not Paul's will. Let's try it again. His, this will is not Paul's will, but it's the will of God. Deacon Dave, can we go to Matthew 6? So Matthew 6, we'll see what Jesus says in verse 10. <clears throat> your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will. The will of God. We can go back, Deacon Dave. We can go back to Ephesians. But the will of God. Not your will, but God's will. What happens in our lives is no coincidence. It's the will of God. You arrived to this country, it's the will of God. You didn't arrive to this country, it's the will of God. You come to this country and now you're a security guard. It's the will of God. You're a handyman by the will of God. You sell insurance by the will of God. Amen. Look, I work at the port by the will of God. You do fingerprints. You do taxes. The will of God. You're a caregiver by the will of God. Understand what we do. You work at Walmart. You work at Target. You're a street sweeper by the will of God. It's his will. And what he does is he, he molds us. He before look before we're even born, we're predestined to land somewhere. I started in New Jersey. I'm in California. I've been all over the world three or four times by the will of God. And each time I travel somewhere, somebody was changed by the will of God. Each time you go out to do your daily function, you change folks with the word of God by the will of God. So Paul starts this very interesting epistle saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Interesting. He's doing this because God already predestined this. Now, you know who Paul is, right? Paul's the one that was going to go out and he's going to, <clears throat> and he's trying to kill the people of the way, the people following Jesus. But Paul was also a well-taught individual. He was well versed in the, the, the scrolls, let's see, in the scroll, and he, he's also a Sanhedrin. 
So he's, he's, in, he's in charge of, or he, he, gave, he gave insight, he gave wisdom or strategy things to Israel, being, being a Sanhedrin. And you would say, how did all that make him a, that was the will of God? Because if he didn't go through all that, if he wasn't taught all those things that Paul was taught, if he didn't understand all those things that, that the Israelites were understanding at that time, when Jesus showed up, it activated something in Paul. And you're going to say, well, it wasn't good. It wasn't good, Pastor. But it was an activation by the will of God. Through that activation, Paul found himself one day traveling on a road to a place called Damascus by the will of God. There was an encounter that needed to take place on this road by the will of God. And that road that journey, that encounter changed Paul in such a way. We get Ephesians 1. We get Ephesians 1 and we get the other epistles by the will of God. And it goes on to say, to the saints which are, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Huh. So this epistle is written to a select few. It's not written for everybody. It's not, it's not, it's not, if you're not a believer, this may not be for you. Turn us off on Facebook, enjoy your, enjoy your day. This might not be for you. This message may not be for you because it's two things or two folks that Paul are addressing right now. The saints and the faithful in Jesus Christ. So this may not be for you. And I find it interesting because he said to the saints. Now, there are certain, and I, and I need to be clear on this, there are certain religions out there to be a saint. There, there's a, a committee, Pastor D. There's a committee. And they, they sit down and they, they get the name comes to this committee to, today. And then they, 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 they look at the name. And then, and then Dr. Bachelor, they say, well, how many miracles did this person do? You got to have two miracles first, this committee. And then the committee goes, oh, oh, you got two miracles? Okay. And then the next question is, is the person alive? Yeah, if they're alive... Can't be a saint yet. If you're dead, then you move over to the next to the next category, which you could be uh, calling me as a saint. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so now this committee they go through and they're looking at who could be a saint, who's qualified a, a committee. It's, they're looking at these people like today. Yeah, they will do it today. They made Mother, Mother Teresa a saint. And they go through and they, they look and they say, well, this, this person is a saint or you're good, you're a saint, you're a saint. Um, the, the, the Catholic Church does this a lot. It's a yeah. committee that sits and makes everybody a saint or you're not a saint. But the key is they need to be dead to be a saint. That qualifies you. You got to be dead. You qualify as a saint for this committee. But if you notice something, Paul, he's not writing to dead people. He's writing to a living church. And they're saints. Now, saints means set apart. That's what saint means. Saint means set apart for the will of God. And then he says, okay, so it, it, to the saints, and then he says to the faithful in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. This message is for the saints, the ones that's been set apart, and to the ones that are faithful in Christ Jesus. And Paul's not writing to dead people. Just want to put everybody on notice. <laughs> Verse 2. Grace be to you and peace. We got to stop there. Now in, in NIV it says <clears throat> sorry, peace and grace be to you. I'm sorry, grace and peace be unto you. So if you notice when Paul writes this, he's always writing grace and then peace. And and, and we know grace and peace are next door in 201, amen? amen. They're, <laughs> they're over here learning right now, amen? Yeah, yeah some of the twins, right? So this is like a twin. Paul kind of wraps this up as, as like a <laughs> like, like, a, like a twin. So there's grace and then there's shalom. Okay. So there's grace and peace or shalom. So for you to get peace or for you to activate shalom, you need to be provided grace from God. It's some things that the only the grace of the Almighty gives us the peace. And when you have the grace of the Almighty God, you get Shalom. So hence, Paul always writing in this in this way, in this manner, grace be to you and peace from where? From God, our father. 
and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you, saints. Grace and peace in your life. Amen. Grace and peace, peace in your health. Amen. Grace and peace in your family. Grace and peace in your finances. Grace and peace when you go on your job, you walk through the door. Grace and peace. Because I'm here because of the will. But now grace is upon me. So now I can activate and see the shalom. Amen. Blessed, verse 3, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, we have Bible study this Thursday, and if you missed it, it's really getting good. I I'm telling you, we're, we're Genesis 25, is that where we're at? Yes. So we're about halfway through Genesis. Next next week, we're going to, oh, no, no, no. Next week, we're not going to have Bible study. The, the second of February, we're going to pick it back up. We're going to go to Genesis 26. But you can see there was a question after Bible study. It said, you know, uh, some, somebody, sent, somebody came in and they said that, you know, um, I guess somebody told this individual that, it's not the father, but it's a mom. Is, is that right? Is that right? something yeah. that something, you heard? You heard that? Something to that effect? Yeah, something to that. Okay, okay. Something to that effect. And I said, well, that's that's interesting because Jesus said when we looked at Matthew, when we looked at Matthew six, go back to Matthew six, Deacon Dave. So we go back to Matthew six. The disciples said, "How do I pray? How do I pray?" <clears throat> and then Jesus said right there in verse nine, then. Uh, this then is how you should pray. And it says, our Father. Uh, Father and who are in heaven. Amen. So Jesus already provided the answer. He already gave us who it is that we that, that's in charge. Who it is that we get the, this, this particular blessing from and where he sits. He sits in heaven. Amen. So just to, just to that person, if they're watching today, I want to, let's look at verse 2 again because let's look and see where it comes from. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. I guess Paul put a period behind that, Dr. Baxter. <laughs> Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. <clears throat> spiritual blessings. So, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> who had or hath blessed us. This is past tense. This is not present tense. So he's writing in past tense. So he's saying, you're already blessed. No, no, he didn't say if you felt like you were blessed. He didn't say, hey, did you, did you go to your house? Do you look like you're blessed? He didn't say that. He said, when you're driving your car and it broke down the side of the road, is that blessed? No, he didn't say that. He said, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Huh. Interesting. So you're already blessed with one thing or two things? Two things. Oh, all things. Hey, he's blessed with all things. Oh, my goodness. So, so hold on a second. So, so God didn't hold back any blessings in the spiritual realm. You're blessed. Huh. <coughs> So we're blessed, past tense, with all spiritual blessings. <coughs> Where do they reside, Paul? In heavenly places and in Christ. So it's this, it's this path that needs to cross. It's this path. You're welcome, my brother. God bless you, sir. In heavenly places. In heavenly places. And Jesus said, our Father, who are what? In heaven. <coughs> so God already established the blessing before we were born. In heavenly places. Amen. Genesis 1. In the beginning God created the heavens. And the earth. Oh, so I was already blessed from back then. Mm -hmm. You were already blessed. From back then. From Genesis 1. Started. And you got the blessing. From Genesis 1. So if we fast forward. To 2023. It's just a combination. Of blessing. Mm -hmm. In the spiritual realm. So if there's no spiritual attack that can come against you, then what is there? If God's on your side, we said in crossover service, then who will be against you? Nobody. You got the blessing Amen. from Genesis 1. Paul's picking up on something. He says, and in Christ, in Christ. If you remember, Paul also wrote, he wrote that 
God is a spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this truth is in Jesus. So there's some arrows that's pointing to different directions. And when you read this whole, whole chapter, you're going to find like 24 ends. I in, 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 in. He's pointing to different directions that we need to understand. We need to, our focal point in, in, in heaven, heavenly places, and in Jesus right now. Okay? And the first one, out of, um, verse one, it says in Christ. So he's repeating himself. So understand, there's some locations. One, you're blessed, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And you're spiritually blessed in Christ. Hmm. Now, what does this look like? This blessing. Let's look. Let's look see, Paul, what, what does this blessing look like, Paul? It says, verse, verse 4, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's a blessing. He chose you. That's right. He chose me. Before the foundation. Remember we said Genesis 1-1? Before Genesis 1-1, he chose you. This is a, a unique opportunity. Ever, ever heard somebody say that they found Jesus? You ever heard somebody say that? Oh, you lucky I found Jesus. <laughs> Was he lost? <laughs> Did he get misplaced? But it says right here that according as he hath chosen us in Remember, in him. So Jesus, the Lord, chose us to be in him before the foundation of the world was ever created. Amen. So you go back a long way, saints. You journey with, with God. You connect with God from a long time ago. And it says, according, <coughs> sorry, that, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God loved us so much that he gave. God loved us so much that he established this planet called Earth. He took the Aduma, the clay, blew his breath into it, knowing that it would rebel. Now, I don't want to go. I know the children and most of the children next door. But if you knew that your child was going to be off track, 20 years ago, you probably had a second thought before you had it. But God said, I'm going to go through with it anyway. He knew this would be a rescue mission. But he gave us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to repent and turn and come back to him. But Jesus was the rescuer. He knew that he had to come and rescue us. And that rescue mission ended him on the cross. Before the foundation, he knew what it would take to rescue us. Before you took a breath, before your parents took a breath, before your great, 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 great grandparents took a breath, before Adam and Eve took a breath or said a word, he knew he had to go on a rescue mission for us. And it was in love. Verse 5, having predestined, what we said before everything was born, predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of whose will? His will. It's all God's will. It's all God's will. When you're happy, it's God's will. When you're sad, it's God's will. When you have it, it's God's will. When you don't have it, it's God's will. When you're up, God's will. When you're feeling down, God's will. You have to go through these trials, these tests, these 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 transitions to see where the weakness is at. You know, anybody here a dentist? Dentist assistant? No? Okay. So the, I was telling my wife this the other day. The dentist, they take this, this oh, like a hook. That's what it looks like to me. And they, 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 they rake it across your teeth. Right? And, and I said, well, what, what are they doing that for? Before you leave, they do that. Right? And they turn around and do the top one. They rake it across your teeth. They're looking for the weak tooth. If they hit a weak tooth, uh, uh, you know, you're flinch a little bit. They, they rake it. They're looking for that weak tooth. So these tests, these things that are already predestined is not to show that we're weak. It's to expose what we need to work on. And it's like the dentist. He's going, there it is. You need to work on that. Work on your attitude. Work on your mouth. 
work on work on helping other helping somebody else. <laughs> work, work, work on going out there and blessing children. Because he knows that we're predestined. That means you were created for a special purpose. Yes. Predestined. So if my brother Caesar, if I was to make something, I make this speaker, it, I, I'm not making a speaker expecting it to, to drive me to LA. That's not why I made the speaker. Right. I made the speaker to project voices or music or some type of noise. Amen? Yes. So when you predestine something, when you create it, it's, it's designed, it's thought about, pre engineered, strengthened for a certain purpose. See, a lot of us think, oh, you know, when I get ready to uh, uh, to, to show God I love Him more, I got to do, um, I, I don't know, I got to become, uh, I got to go to, uh, I don't know, seminary, like like the yeah. pastor. I got to go to seminary. I got to do more. I got to readjust my life. I got to, I got, I got to do this more. I got to show people that I'm doing all this stuff, so that way they can believe that I'm, I'm connected to God. But that's not why He predestined you. You may be predestined to be a security guard because somebody that you're going to run into needs to be blessed, wow. and they got, they need to be blessed before you're born. Before they're born, this connection needs to happen. Predestined. I remember uh, years ago, we moved up to Victorville, and I always say, why? <laughs> anyway, so I always say, what am I doing in Victorville? Remember? remember my wife here. 12, 12 years. It took me to get to understand that I was predestined to be here. But it took me some time to get it together, and I tried to shake it. And f in fact, I got a job in San Diego. I said, no, no, no. We're done. Back to San Diego. And my wife said, no, no, you're going back. I'm staying here. Predestined. So I had to turn the job down. And if I didn't turn the job down, I wouldn't be here today. Amen. Predestined. Amen. If I if I turned the job down, I wouldn't have known about this, the, the seminary down the hill in Moreno Valley. Predestined mm -hmm. to be here. I was on the usher board at a, at a bigger church down here in Victorville. Pretty, pretty hard, uh, pretty large church. But it's predestined. I had to see how it worked. I had to see how the usher board is supposed to go in and do things. I'm supposed to see how the usher board is supposed to stand by for the pastor. I'm supposed to move the other pastors around. I didn't say, Pastor, you need to hold on. You need to get out of the way. Pastor, you can come through. They got to see how to move the church. Hey, close those doors. The pastor's praying. Nobody moves when prayer is going on inside of the sanctuary. Because you need to understand there's a connection happening. Everybody stand still. Not one. Everyone stay seated. Everyone is quiet because the word is being spoken. Predestined. Amen. I had to learn that. Amen. I had to learn that. And I, and I used to go to, I used to go to classes on Saturday. They had these usher board classes. I go there on Saturday. They give you tests. I'm like, I'm taking a test on usher board? <laughs> <laughs> what happened if I fail? <laughs> but predestined. It's, it's what it's about. It's about building a structure in us because at some point, you may not have seen it yet, then you're going to be activated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 you got to go through training first. You go through boot camp first. You go through schooling first. Then they got to understand. Oh, so you've been through training? You think you've been through boot camp? Okay, how do you act in the field? Let's let's pretend it's a battle going on. Let me see how you respond. Ah, you didn't respond good. Let's go it again. Training, boot camp, back to the field. Ah, now you got it. And it's a repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Now you got it. Now you're ready. But you're predestined. Predestined. According to the good pleasure of his will. Members, all the will of God. Verse 6, to praise, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us ex accepted in the beloved. The beloved. He's, we're accepted in the beloved. And that means that we are gathered in love. It's the beloved saints. The saints that are set apart for his, at his will to administer his love. It's a unique place to be, Paul is saying. And Paul's still going on. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through his blood. The cross. The blood. Spread, spread all out on the hillside. Gadalta for us. Then when he gave up the ghost, one of the centurions pierced his side. If you notice, they pierced the side from here up. That is to make sure they hit the heart and the lung cavity before they came out to ensure that death took place. But Jesus said, you don't kill me. I give up the ghost. And when he gave up the ghost, the ground 
started to shake. The sky got dark. The, 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 the veil was ripped. And through those evident scenes. Oh, one more thing that uh, Mark writes. The tombs broke and the saints got up. The ones that were dead, the ones that were persecuted, they were buried in these tombs and they were alive. And through that activity, through those, ev those events, the centurion says, truly, that was a man of God. Truly, that was God. Amen. The first witness after the resurrection, after the death. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. Verse 8, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, which he had lavished upon us, and I mean, in all wisdom and insight. Because you're predestined for a certain purpose. You're already ready to strike when you're called upon. You're ready to be activated when the time presents itself. See, certain things we have in us, but we don't know yet. It's a situation that happens to occur. And, and, and like my brother said, <coughs> excuse me, Trayvon Martin, his mom is now a civil rights leader, activated. Certain situations that we, that we think we can't do, that, that's not even a forethought in our head. And then we have some, some brother, like Martin Luther King, walking around saying, no, 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 everybody's equal. And they say, no, no, I'm going to put a target on you. And he said, yeah, everybody's equal. And then they beat him up. Yeah, everybody's equal. Then they put him in jail. Everybody's equal. Not all of us continue that. So I get here over the head and say, okay, you're equal. <laughs> you know? But he said, everybody's equal. Predestined, activated, act at a certain time. Now, some of us, it's a time when this predestined activation happens. And it changes global effect. It changes the world. Don't think that, they're, that you're not a world global changer. No, no, as you sit here, don't think that you're not. You just probably haven't been activated yet. But once God activates you, you will change the world. You will change the globe through Jesus Christ and this word. I, I, I know that. I'm telling you, you're a world global changer. And with wisdom. Wisdom. It's a unique position to have wisdom from God. It's a unique position to have wisdom from the Almighty because it doesn't just get you into a situation, but it keeps you from a situation. Yes. The wisdom of the Almighty. Because you're predestined, you have this wisdom in you. In fact, you probably said things or realized things that you never thought about before, and when you look it up, it's true. You never looked it up before on Google or whatever, social media, but when you looked it up, you said, man, how did I know that? It's wisdom from God. Mm -hmm. It protects us. It gets us on, it keeps us on the right path. It, it, it moves you out of the way in the nick of time and then it puts you right back when it needs you. It's this wisdom that comes from God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a wisdom that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And in NIV in verse 10, it says, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. The time. It's a predestined time. I, I hope the saints understand. Mm -hmm. You're a weapon at a precise time. Your strength yes. at a precise time. Yes. Look, we had uh, a few family members pass away last year, and now I had to fly to New Jersey. Strength at a precise time. People in the church falling apart. I was able to provide strength at a precise time yes. Thank you, Lord. when I didn't have it. When I didn't have the strength. You'll be given strength from the Almighty at a precise time. Amen. Understand that it's the will of God. You're predestined to sing, Sister J, at this choir at a precise time. Yes. All the other choirs you went through, now you're here at a precise time. Wow. And people are being changed. Amen. It's God's will. Yes. And it's his will 
to be done on earth as it is in heaven Amen. at this time. Amen. Verse, I'm going to come back out of the NIV again. Verse number 11. In him, we have obtained an inheritance. Oh, let's stop there. Because you, you, you got an inheritance. You got something, spiritual blessings as an inheritance. It's something that was, okay, inheritance. Do you have to work for an inheritance, anyone? No. no. It could be given. It be given. Your name's already written down. The Lord, if they get it, they can't bifurcate. Go around. The inheritance was written. They can't separate you from what's, what's written. They have to call you to the table. Because why? You're in there. And this inheritance, you didn't earn it. It's given to you by our God. It's given to you <clears throat> at a location. It says in him, we have our obtained inheritance. Having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. There's a repetition there. It's all his. You're his. The word is his. This earth is his. The heavens is his. And you've been pre predestined. Pre-ordained, pre-dialed in, ready to go at a certain time. Amen. What's that time, Pastor? I don't know. God knows. He's talking to you. He's been speaking to you. If you've been predestined to go out and bless communities, go bless communities. If you've been predestined to take the word back to your back to your country, take the word back to the country. If you've been predestined to go into like just like Coach James is doing, talk to the youth. Talk to the youth. Because whatever you're in, whatever you're doing, is by the will of God. Amen. And when Christians do things for the will of God, all things work together for the good. So if you need to be a change maker, go be a change maker. Amen. If you need to be a mayor, because things aren't happening in your in your town or in your city the way it should, then let God activate you, predestined to be a mayor, a mouthpiece for him sitting in the mayor's seat. Let me ask you guys something. This last question. So the president of the United States, he's in where? He's in D.C. We're in D.C. He's in the White House. Okay. White House is still big. I don't know if you've been there, but it's, it's huge. <laughs> We're in the White House. He's in the office. Okay. His office is still big. Right? Everybody been in there. He's been through his office. We're in the office. He's at the seat. You're at the seat this morning. Amen. You're at that seat. Predestined. Make the call. If God activates you, go to work. If God has given you something, go to work. Amen. You're not predestined to be quiet. You're not predestined to be silent. You're not predestined to stay in the corner. You're predestined and activating on God's behalf because of his will. Amen. Spiritual blessings. These are spiritual blessings. And I want the saints to understand something. We're going to read 13 and then we're going to wrap up. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, <coughs> the gospel, of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promise Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. I said we got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. You're sealed now. You're predestined. You're sealed. You're ready to be signed and delivered when God's ready. This package is predestined, ready to be deployed at God's doing, at God's timing because of him. And you're that package. I don't care if you're on the job site, you're that package. I don't care if you're in the doctor's office, you're in that package. You can be, I was driving down the street years ago, years ago, years ago, like 70 years ago. I'm going to uh, Palmdale and it's, and it's 3.30 in the morning and I'm driving down the street. I'm talking about predestined. I'm going on the 138 towards Palmdale. It's a gentleman on the side of the road with his hands up. And I go by him. Sontrally. Foo. <laughs> Foo. And the spirit said, stop. And I said, I don't pick up people. You know what I mean? So I got on it. I don't pick up people. I'm from Jersey. We don't, you got to be careful you pick up. Like, right? And the Spirit said, pick him up. And I said, we can do this how you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm driving, right? Then my hands started shaking. Then my, my, my heart started beating. I said, are you serious? Are you serious? So I stopped the car. I turned around. And I stopped. I stopped behind him. And now, Jersey come out. You okay, man? <laughs> he goes, oh, my God. I've been praying for you. He said, oh, my God, the police came and left us here. I said, us, who's us? Then his son popped up in the back seat. He's like 10 to 12 years old. He said, sir, I'm freezing. I said, come on, get in the car, man. Get in the car, man. Get in the truck. 
He said, I tried to call my mom to tell her where we're at, but my cell phone, the battery died. I said, well, you got the same charge as me. Charge your phone. Where you guys from? Victorville. So I turned around, took him back to Victorville, took him back to the house. He called his mom and everybody was happy, his grandma and everybody there. But I'm predestined. Predestined. I'm trained not to stop. In Jersey, you don't stop. Just heads up. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm trained not to stop. But in this particular moment, 3.30 in the morning, pitch black outside on the 138, no street lights, ain't nothing out there, just coyotes. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm driving, and it's cold. It's cold. It's like these mornings. It's very, very cold. And, and um, the car broke down, and the, and the dad, I guess what happened, he got lost. He thought he was in Alonto. I said, sir, you're far away from Alonto right now. You're actually in L.A. County. But I took him back to his house. So what I'm saying is you're going to be predestined to be activated at a certain time. 3 a.m., you'll be activated. Midnight, activated. 8 a.m., activation. Noon, activation. When God's timing calls for you to be activated. So as you sit there, don't take your assignments lightly. As you sit there, don't think that God has overlooked you. As you sit there, know that you are a predestined weapon, ready to be activated at God's timing, at God's will. My brother Emma, when you, when you went to the doctor's office, Activation. Amen. The doctors that just change him, he changes doctors. Activation. Amen. Amen. This is something else when you see how preordained a person is, predestined a person is. So you, my wife says this all the time. You, when you walk past people, you don't know their story. When you walk past people, you don't know what they've been through. When you see people on the roadside, you don't know what life God has in store for them. But when they're activated, oh, how mercy, how mercy. When somebody's activated by God, Thank you, Lord. you can feel it. Oh, yeah. When someone's activated by the Holy Spirit, yeah. as they walk through the door, you can see it. Yeah. When they're activated by God himself, no matter who is in the audience, they'll say, you, come up. It's an activation that happens. Each and every one of you are activated predestined, ready to be activated at a certain time, yes. location, yes. hour, but we don't know when. Amen. But we don't know when. It's our job to keep praying. Amen. It's our job to keep gathering, talking about the goodness of God. It's our job to remind people out there, do you know that you're predestined? And they'll look at you, but I'm homeless. You're predestined to be whatever God has, needs you and wants you to be at a given time. My sister used to be homeless. We had a home. She decided to be homeless. She's probably out there now. I remember going around looking for her in Jersey, in abandoned buildings, in the street, calling her name. I remember when I got a driver's license, I look at my son, he's 18, he got a driver's license. I said, what I used to do is pick up my niece and we'd go driving around North New Jersey looking for her. And my niece would say, there she is. And before I could stop the car, she would jump out. But now, because of those experiences, she has her own house. Uh huh. I went to her house last time in Jersey. She has her own house. Furthermore, she's an administrator of the court. She's running the courthouse. So don't you tell me that at a certain time we have to go through some things. We need to go through some things because you can't just read about it. You can't just get a book about it. You can't watch YouTube about it. We can do all those things. You know, hey, I learned how to swim. Well, you did? Okay, what you do? I watch YouTube. Oh, you did? Okay, I read a book. You read a book about swimming? Uh -huh, yeah, I did. And then we talked about swimming. Me and my wife, we talked about swimming. So then the question is, did you swim? Like, no, I never swim yet. Then why are you talking? <laughs> then why, why are we having this conversation? <laughs> but you got to go through some things. So you have to experience. You understand. You can connect and relate to a situation or a person or a people. Remember, all nations. All nations. That's what we speak to. All nations. Yeah. So when you come up to them, they see you coming. Ooh, yes. They see you coming. When you talk to them, they feel, oh, they, oh you, what, what you say? Say that to me again. It, it moves something in their spirit. Uh -huh. Because you're predestined to say that word at that given time. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, saints, but I want you to know that God has selected you. Amen. God has developed, designed on you on a specific purpose. Amen. A specific Amen. task. At Windpasser, a specific time. Amen. According to his word.
will. You are blessed, saints. You are blessed by God himself. Before Genesis 1, you were blessed. Spiritual blessings you were given before Genesis 1. So don't let any enemy into your mind and say that you're not blessed. Don't let any enemy into your thought process and say, what are you doing? I'm doing God's will. Don't let any enemy take a foothold in your life and make you change your mind in which God already predained and ordained you to be. You are what God wants you to be. God bless you, saints. May God continue to uplift you. May God continue to strengthen you. And may you be a blessing at an ordained time that God established. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Offering time. Yeah. Wow, activation yeah. at the point in time. Yeah. God is good. Grace and mercy. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. That was powerful. Come on, let's give him the grace. That was powerful. We give glory and thanks to God. Now, if we can please have our choir come up and continue to bless us. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful, guys. We are truly blessed. Amen. Their group. That's the group. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. Oh, there is nothing it cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good. for the word dear God we are truly truly grateful Amen. thank yes, you for Lord. grace yes. thank you for mercy yes, Lord. Father God as we come in one agreement with our financial offerings please God let the Holy Spirit direct us to give faithfully in your holy name yes. Father God continue to bless this ministry our homes our children and continue to have mercy upon us regardless of our financial situations have mercy on us to know that whatever happens you are still our provider yes. father god thank you thank you, thank you for the word thank you for praise and worship yes. thank you for every single members in here father god these are the things and we also seal this prayer in the mighty and the powerful name of jesus yes. we have prayed over our offering Amen. Amen. We're going to take our seats for a moment. All right, we're going to get into our announcement. Um, every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we start our Sunday worship service. 
And on Thursdays, not this Thursday coming up, but we'll start back on February the 2nd. <coughs> to be our Bible study at 6.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. And it's really good. It's really coming together. And if you can't make it here, uh, please join in. It's a link. Go to our website. Go to uh, About Us. And then you scroll down. You'll see like a, map, uh, a, a calendar. And you'll see the link in there in the, in the calendar. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, Coach James is here today. 201, talking to the youth. And what we're going to do with Coach James, and we're going to do going forward, starting in February, I used to, we used to do this thing, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Pastor Steve, we used to do this thing where um, it's called, the uh, a, it's a Christian talk show. Talk show. It's a Christian talk show. So it's this Christian talk show for two years. Mm -hmm. It really, really took off, and we're going to reestablish it in February. I don't have the date yet. I've got to work with uh, with uh, Coach Campbell, but I want to make it a live one. I want to make it live right here. We'll take this out. We'll move some stuff around. We'll make it look like in uh, a studio. Amen. And we'll have, we'll have a one hour uh, talk and response answer with, uh, with each individual guest. So for this particular first one, it'd be Coach James Campbell. And then for the second one, Pastor D. Hey, Pastor D. <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to bring people in the community. Uh, Brother Caesar, you know, we bring people in the community and we'll talk to them about their Christian walk. Yes. See what it is? We got to talk to people and see what they've been through. We got to talk to people to pull it out and then they can bless us. On, on, on how they got over stuff. You see people walking on hot coals and they're just like drinking a whole cold glass of water. You're like, how do you do that? Because I'm like this. <laughs> and they're just walking and going. But we got to get that out of them. And we got to feed ourselves with that with that inspiration because God gives us things individually, but the idea is to pull it back out. And one of the ways that um, that I, I, I found for, for me is to sit down in a talk show and we get a, a broader audience. Amen? So we want to put that together. It's coming It's coming back together. Yeah, yeah, God's good. God's good. <laughs> and our, Amen. And then our family day is February the third. Okay, February the third, family day. So don't miss it. Come back out, and um, you know we'll, we'll have the word of God, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll have fellowship after that. Amen. Oh yeah, celebrating February birthday. Yeah, everybody born in February. That's right. Yeah, come on out. That's right. I'm sorry. It's the love month. Okay, amen. All right. Yes, yes. So we'll, we'll celebrate and we'll love on each other over there at the at the food. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. So, um, anything else? Am I missing anything else? February 12th, Monica. Oh, February 12th? Oh, Sister Monica's coming back? Oh, this this young lady is a blessing. Um, Sister Monica, she came um, like three months ago? Two months, Two months ago. And uh, and the youth really, really love their her. That's what she does full time. She works in uh, as a teacher uh, for, for young for young kids um, and special needs kids as well. Her, her whole family does. It. I think yeah, the dad, the mom, everybody on down. But she got into a car accident like right after she came here. And now she's back. God is amazing. We went to go see her about six weeks ago or so, and we prayed with the family and things like that. And now she's ready to come back. That is amazing. Amen. That that's expedited healing, my brother. I'm telling you, my sister. I tell you. So anyway, she's coming back on February 12th. I got to go over here because she's going to have a powerful story. Matter of fact, we'll bring her up first. We'll let her give her story and then she'll take the children out and that way she can bless them like we did today. Amen. 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 Oh, that's, that's good. That's good to hear. Amen. <laughs> Any other message? February 5th. Uh huh. It's family day. Oh, February 5th. Yeah, correction. Family, fe family day is February the 5th, which is a Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> she's smiling too. I like that. <laughs> Amen. Oh, okay. And if you didn't get your tax statement um, for your, your, your faithful giving from 2022, please see Pastor D. She has them already, okay? All right. Any, anything else? Oh, Dr. Baxter. Yeah. Oh. Uh, just announcing the uh, Wednesday Bible study yes. at Hugh Cook Community Park. Yes. And it's at 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. And also, I have a guest here. Oh. Oh, okay. Hey. Any new members in, in here today? Stand up, please. Stand up. Let's give them a warm welcome. A warm welcome. Yay. A revival center welcome. Yes. Yes. Let's shake their hand. Let's shake their hand. Give them a hug. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
That's what I mean. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, yes, yes. New members, new new members, new people coming in. This is good stuff. You know, God is really, really taking this ministry to incredible heights. And and it's to his will. And it's to his glory. I say welcome, my sister. Welcome. Welcome. Let's everybody stand up. We'll go ahead and close out in our prayer. Anything else? Anything else? All good? Okay. You know, this was a good Sunday. Amen. This is a, a God-given Sunday. Amen. This is a Sunday that was predestined, preordained for you. Amen. And I'm glad that you came today to hear the message that God had for us today. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your message. Thank you for your son. And thank you for delivering the Holy Spirit on time. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Yes. Knowing what each one of us need and delivering the needs to us in the now. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in advance for all that you've done and all that you will do and about to do in our lives. Yes. Heavenly Father, as we journey through today and the rest of the week, the rest of this month, <coughs> keep us. Keep your children protected. Keep your children strengthened. And keep the Holy Spirit clothed as a garment around them. Everywhere they go, let the light in them shine. Everywhere they go, allow them to overcome darkness and efface and remove adversities in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We uplift you. We exalt you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and be and give you peace forever and forever. Amen, amen. and amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Be blessed. Thank you, my sister. God bless you.